Hello my soccer universe. Yep, today I'm a little bit more pressed with time, but I still want to do it here. Nice background and I have all the notes more available. So it's better to not do it in the car because there would be way too much to remember or I have to put sheets up, which I don't like. A lot of action again yesterday and I was actually really discussing. Shall I wear the Italy shirt as I said before, since Italy got a win or shall I go with others? Like for instance Germany, who ran riot. Absolutely riot on Estonia, 8-0, um, Marco Reus, wonderful combination, Gnabry, same thing, Goretzka in the 20th, it was 3-0, it was absolute onslaught. Gundogan from a penalty in the 26th and Reus complete a 5-goal halftime, the first one since that night in 2014. Uh, I think Estonia had the problem that this is a young German team and we had some troubles in Germany at the World Cup. You know, everyone's counting Germany out and Germany is hot and wants to show that they are much better than their current reputation is. Knabry in the 62nd makes it 6, Werner in the 79th 8, uh, 7 and Leroy Sané was offside but he was taken, another off, uh, a goal was taken away for offside which was not makes it 8-0 and Germany has the victory of the evening. At one point, I was even joking with my wife, who will make more goals, Germany or the US against Thailand? The women, of course. Well, Germany always had the <laughs> longer odds for that one, because, I mean, the US are free scoring. But this was absolute domination. And Germany is really asserting themselves in their Group C. Northern Ireland also gets a win. Uh, a 1-0 away to Belarus, which means that Northern Ireland has the best start of them all, but only for the reason that um, they have already played four games. Germany has only played three. Uh, and I don't know, I think Northern Ireland has not played either Germany or the Netherlands so far. The Netherlands have only two games, uh, one loss against Germany, and I think they won against Belarus. So... Um, I think this Northern Ireland result is not, you know, 12 points is nice, but they will have a hard time, I think, getting into the qualification spots. Let's move on to the next group, which is Group E, uh, where the big result, or the big game, was uh, Hungary against Wales after Slovakia beat uh, Azerbaijan away from home in completely uh, 2016 kits, which I found odd. 5-1. Um, I have not seen that. I also found it very interesting that so many Slovaks made the trip to Azerbaijan. Either they played in another stadium, which again, this might have slipped me, or really the Slovaks like to travel. Hungary Wales was a much more even affair and was basically a very important game for Wales. And again, very weird jersey matchups. Wales played again in red away from home. And Hungary had to play in their white jerseys. This I understand even less so than the Croatia one. Uh, Wales has a white and a green kit. Hungary could play in all red. I don't understand why Hungary has to play in uh, white. It was an even affair there. I, with chances on both sides, maybe slight advantage for Hungary overall in the play. Um, Bale missed what I can only call a sitter. And Hungary scores from Patkai after in the I think in the 80th after before uh, Wales already scrapped away the ball from the line, so that was another huge win for Hungary, uh, who I actually didn't expect to um, do much. I mean, especially after the opening defeat to Slovakia. But now Hungary leads with nine points, Slovakia with six, Croatia also with six. Um, so Croatia have their work cut out, and Wales might not get into there. Azerbaijan, I think, is just cannon fodder, but this is a very, very even group. I still would expect Croatia to go through, but, you know, Hungary and Slovakia have strong showings here. Then we go all the way to the bottom of the groups, to Group H, the one with the world champions France, who got an easy win in Andorra after so bouncing back from the Turkey defeat. You were, they were always expected to beat Andorra, I think. Um, the first two goals were by Mbappé, who just ran through the defense, and then uh, Ben Yedda, and then two more or less substitute players added two more. It was 3-0 at half and 4-0 at the end, so France can go into vacation. In the same group, Albania beat Moldova 2-0. The big game, of course, was Iceland. Um, 
played up north where Turkey, high after the victory of France, travels there and Iceland is, they don't like that one. It ended 2-1 for Iceland. Uh, Ragnar Sigurdsson scores, a uh, uh, defender, it's not the attacker, Gilfi Sigurdsson, um, scores both goals. The first one after free kick from the right, the second one from a corner from the left, had us in 2-0 Iceland and they actually had the bet of the game until then. It was only until the 40th when Dorhan Tokus makes it 2-1 again, a defender from a header. Then Turkey tries, but uh, Iceland actually had chances to make it 3-1, but uh, they were mostly defending a second half, holding on to that win, which is for them a huge win now, because they remain in contention. This group is also very tight. France 9, Turkey 9, Iceland 9. So uh, I think Iceland has a shot against Turkey, uh, although Turkey looked good. Albania don't think we'll get into it as to Moldova and Andorra, uh, who are round out the bottom of the table. Group I um, had Russia beating Cyprus 1-0 and Kazakhstan 4-0 against San Marino, so uh, more or less expected results. Russia, I would have actually expected more from uh, just the 1-0. And then uh, the big match was Belgium against Scotland. Scotland was only defending Belgium, getting the goal uh, right before halftime through Lukaku. Lukaku on his birthday adds a second and Kevin De Bruyne makes a nice one at the end to make it 3-0 for Belgium. I think the result was never in doubt and this is another group where I think the two, we know the which two will run away. This will be Belgium and Russia. Uh, Belgium 12 points, Russia 9 points. I mean Kazakhstan and Scotland now with 6 points each I don't think have a chance in. Although I think they both will play in their respective playoffs. So at least that's a fallback. And then the last group is Group J, uh, where Greece continues the horrible streak. I mean, they did not look good against Italy, although I, I really like how Italy played. Uh, losing 2-3 at home to Armenia. They were down 2-0 uh, at half. Got a goal, 3-1 Armenia. Nice goal by Fortunus, but a little bit too late. Um, Greece is an enigma to me. They are absol they're absolutely in bad form. Finland gets a, the expected win against Liechtenstein, and then it was the question, will Bosnia get back into the uh, group uh, way to Italy? That's the game I watched, and it was a great game. Bosnia came to Turin to play. Italy had initially a little bit possession, but then Bosnia really bossed them around a lot. <laughs> That's a pun. Uh, being very dangerous on attack, uh, having nice attack, attack by Vistja and Dzeko causing havoc. There was one shot saved by Bonucci uh, uh, from Vistja, which could have been 1-0, then a wonderful attack. Watch the highlights, this was a really great goal. Um, a back heel on the turnaround to Vistja, who uh, goes to the touchline into Dzeko, who just has to tap it in. Italy seemed on the ropes. This was a deserved win. They didn't get a good chance until late in the first half. So it ends 1-0 at halftime for Bosnia. Italy comes back. I mean, Bosnia actually had, had a chance to make it 2-0, but then Italy kind of started to assert themselves and gets the goal from Insigne, who was even better than the first one. Corner kick and he wallows it in. It was a uh, corner kick on the opposing side going to uh, the left attacking corner and he just wallows it in. Great goal in the 49th. Then it was very open, both teams going for the win. But the longer the game went, the more uh, Italy got the, uh, the better of it. Insigne almost had it in, the winner. But in the end, it was Verratti in the 86th who gets the winner. Maybe in the end deserved. Uh, but I really thought that Bosnia, with many fans in there, should have gotten a point out of this. Uh, it was there. It was possible for them. So the standings now are that Italy, of course, leads this group with 12 points ahead of Finland with 9. So Finland might be the one that uh, gets uh, the second qualifying spot, which would, would, would be surprised. Armenia sits now third on 6 points and Greece is still ahead of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So Greece and Bosnia are the ones that are the big disappointment so far. Their campaigns are not over, but Finland is a very, very solid team. They're a B nation next time around. Well, that was it for my review of yesterday's games. Let me know which games you watched. I th thought I made the right choice by watching Italy play Bosnia. It was an exciting game. Really liked that one. 
Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.